Hey everyone, it's Robin, Artist Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you what crafty goodness I've been up to in the past week or so. In a recent tutorial, we did the reverse applique for a scrappy tree. You can see the nice sparkle in those pine trees on the side. Single fold binding. I love how just lightweight it makes it. It's just, I'll never stop talking about how much I love single fold binding. And on my patrons, I stuck with the same theme, but we did the raw edge fusible applique, single fold binding. Again, everything's nice. And I love this fabric with the Christmas tree lights on it. I thought this one would be really fun if you wanted to put like people's names on it so you can use it as a place setting when you're having a party. So technically you could put anything you want over here. It doesn't have to be Christmas themed or winter themed and then you can still add the names. And then I have one with no binding. This is the reverse applique so it just needs to have its binding added to it. So that'll be something I need to finish up soon. So carrying on the tree theme, this week's tutorial coming up on this Friday is going to be this really easy, almost like an improv type of whack and stack, simple tree to make. I'm sure many of you have already seen these. These trees have been around for quite a while, but they're really fun to make. They are quick and easy. So if you want to make some type of a forest of trees quilts, you can go ahead and whip these out really fast. I did mine in sets of two, so that's why you see the opposites here and there. I don't know what I'm going to do with mine. I probably won't make more this size. I have a couple of charm packs that I like to make some smaller ones out of. And again, carrying over YouTube tutorials into Patreon, we went ahead and made this little one in your tutorial coming up on Sunday. I think I'm going to finish this guy off just as is and either turn him into a mug rug or a zipper pouch. It's not going to get any bigger when I say as is. I won't be adding to this one. I finished a couple dishcloths. You can see they're from the same yarn ball. They're all blocked and nice and ready to go. I don't know if I'm gonna be putting any in the shop just yet. I'm going to try to make a few for Christmas first and then we'll go from there. For those of you who've been around for a while, you know I just like to knit dishcloths. Like when I'm waiting for dinner, it only you only have like five or 10 minutes so I can pick up the dishcloth, knit on a little bit because you start here and you start small and it gets wider and then you narrow back down. I believe I have a video for this. I'll go ahead and put a link down below for that. But it's one of those projects that I don't knit dishcloths to make dishcloths. I knit them just to have something to do while I'm waiting for those few little minutes because otherwise I'll wander off and get involved in something else and I'll forget what's going on in the kitchen or whatever it is I'm waiting for. Plus it's a good project to do when you're a little tired and it's you don't want to really get into something too big of a knitting project. So I just go ahead and pick this up. You do a row or two, set it down and it's fine. This is my bin of scraps from the scrappy spool pin cushions that we worked on recently. I've just been working on sewing them together into groups of two and then I've clipped them together so that they can be into a group of five. And I'll probably turn these into a variety of projects. Some of them will be pin cushions, some of them will be zipper pouches, and some will probably be tote bags. I might even make a pillow cover, who knows? But I have a nice selection of them to keep me busy for a bit. I don't think I've shown you guys these little mini wall hangings to this point yet. These are the ones I'm making for my daughter for the summertime gaming channel. I am going to go ahead and add my tags on it, just like y'all suggested. I've had the facing sewn onto all four of them. Three for her and one for me. This way it gives her a good variety, so if she really doesn't like the way one of them looks, she can always pick the other three. So I still need to go through and hand stitch these down. So that's going to be an evening project or I'll work on it a little bit each morning before I get really into whatever it is I'm working on that day. I also finished a tote bag. So this is the one that we were working on doing the big stitching when we were doing the big hand stitch quilting. And what I like about this, I'm not sure if you can catch it in the video here, but it's the way it's done and the way I stitched it, it's not all nice and flat. It kind of has a little bit of a crinkly look to it. 
So I really like that. I did not have enough of this pink from the bottom to make the handles. So I went ahead and added some purple to it. And I put, I put the purple on one side on this handle and on the opposite side of that handle so that when you're holding them up, you can see both. That way they don't line up. So if the marks right here don't line up exactly on the front and back handle, it won't matter because they're opposite. When I did my big stitching, I did it with embroidery floss, sometimes with three strands, sometimes with four or five, depending on what was on the spool when I took it off. But I was worried about anything coming undone because I started here while this piece with the bottom was already sewn on. So I started here and I ran it up that way. I wasn't too worried about the top because I knew I'd be sewing the bag. So I did some top stitching here. I did all my straight line matchstick quilting on the bottom. And just the way it looks, it just has that, see how you can see that crinkly look? So I love the way this bag turned out like that. So I did a stitching on the pink because I put my knot and I came up here right at the sewing line. And then I did a straight line of stitching here to catch it. And then I was worried, I wanted to make sure that it was caught really well. So I did a decorative fancy stitching of my feather stitch through here. So hopefully that'll hold all of that down. And then on the top, even though I still knew I was going to be doing this before I did anything, and while it was still one big piece before sewing it all together, right along I did a top stitching about an eighth of an inch just to lock those knots in up at the top and to make sure because now, as everything is, yes, there are knots down here, but you can't feel them. And these knots up here were cut off. So everything's secure down there. And then... Of course, when I do my two rows of top stitching along the top, it secured it there. And then just to make sure nothing pulled up in a weird spot, I also did a line, two lines actually, of top stitching just along here to give it another little de decorative look, but to ensure that things weren't going to get pulled. And then I tested by putting a little needle underneath here and pulling up on it. And you cannot pull the embroidery floss from any of those areas. So that was just the little things that I did just to make sure that it was nice and secure. I didn't want to have to worry about it falling apart when it goes to a customer. And then on the inside, I did something totally crazy. I used the same fabric on both pieces. And you guys know I love to add little funky fabrics on each side. I tried to match the colors at least. But this time, I just stuck with the same purple. Because I couldn't figure out which colors I wanted. So I thought since I'm going to use the purple in the handle, I'll use the purple in the lining. And that takes care of everything. That gave me the opportunity to use my last dark purple zipper. And I thought I'd go ahead and use some of the blue-green from the outside. So I have a little blue there, a little green there and stuff. And I put it into my zipper pull. And my lining is just another purple. It's kind of that purpley pink, that lighter color. Kept with the tag on the inside, so that worked out well there. And then I did the welt pocket. So guys, I learned how to put the little flap up there to make it look like an actual welt pocket and not that little opening I had in my last one. And then I used a pink on the inside, a nice light pink, which of course is that same fabric right here because of the technique of bringing it forward. The bottom is stitched inside, the lining is stitched, so you can't pull it out again. I think on my next bag, I'm going to try putting some lightweight interfacing on my lining, just to see how that comes out. I turned it through this pocket here, so there's no stitches down at the bottom, so you don't have that little bit of stitching that peeks out there, so that's tucked away inside this one. I have to say, it took me a little bit to get my brain wrapped around a tote bag because I haven't made one in a while. I rewatched the video on how to make the welt pocket. I mean, I had the idea in my head. I just wanted to make sure. I didn't want to mess up anything. This was the last of this type of purple that I have, so I didn't want to have any issues and have to go find something else. It already took me a while to come up with a lining for it. I do like to use fat quarters for the lining, but again, I couldn't find anything that would have two that would work well. And speaking of fat quarters, thank you guys so much for recommending that I take the labels off of mine.
So I went through and I removed all the labels off of here just to ensure there's no stickiness. Now I have some in my fabric room that are in one of those little plastic drawer wheelie cart things. They've had the labels on them for a very long time and I've never had any problem with it. But just in case, I took them off of here and when I have the time, I'll pull out those fat quarters and add them to the stash in here and go ahead and pull those labels off too. Because the labels on here really aren't telling me anything. They're like from Joann's and Walmart and stuff, so it's not like it's from a fabric line. These are actually just folded fat quarters that did not have any labels on it anyway. They came in one of those bundles where you have like a ribbon wrapped around it and the tag has it on there. Sometimes you get three or four of the fat quarters in there. There's not even any cardboard in these at all. So thank you guys for that little tip. We'll just leave this tote bag here as a nice little backdrop and I want to show you a couple of things that came in the mail recently. I received this fun card. I like that it has like glue here or something, whatever it is that's it's raised up so it makes the water drops look like water drops. So I'm guessing based on videos I've watched that you put a stamp with black ink on it and then you take your watercolor or your markers or your pencil or whatever and then you just color in the areas Then you have the little part that pops open here and it has just a little touch of an ink along there so i thought that was really nice i thought that one was very cute and i also received this one now I have to guess these are handmade cards because there's nothing on the back of them that shows anything. Well, this one has been signed, so I know her mama made this one. And then this one is nothing on the back, so we're going to go with the fact that it's handmade. I love it because it has a sunflower on it and it has this, this little bit of a hello that's got nice and shiny gold on top. And then this card opens this way. I thought that was really sweet. Thank you guys for making these lovely cards and sending them to me. They will go into my handmade card collection. I received a box of some scrap fabrics recently and inside of it, it had this pineapple block. So this is a 10 and a half inch block before it's been put into a block. And I not only did I receive one, but I received two of these. I love pineapple blocks. I just never really have enough of the low volume types of fabrics and stuff to work here. I'm fine with all the brights and stuff going out like that. I can do scrappy, I can do regular. So these are really sweet. And since they're 10 and a half inches, I can turn these into tote bags and bulk them out into about 16 and a half inches. So put a nice border around it and I'll be all set. Or I can just add a bottom and a couple sides, whatever. It'll, it'll turn into something fun. So I'll have a front and a back if I want, or I can make it into two bags and just put a fun coordinating fabric onto the back. And also inside this box, this may not seem very exciting, but I really love this fabric. The aquas and the blues. Now I'm not really into the, the paisley type thing like that, but I just love aqua and blue together. Now this is actual just a piece of fabric with some batting on it and it's been free motion quilted. But I just, I'm showing it to you because I just love the color. So I thought I'd just brighten your day with a little bit of fun. This also would get definitely turned into something. I'll have to see if I have any coordinating fabric to go with it. Worst case scenario, I can just use some type of red. And there was one more fabric that I fell in love with that this definitely has to be turned into some type of a bag. This is a sturdier fabric, so maybe it's more of like an outdoor or not an outdoor upholstery type fabric or something. It's got a bit of strength to it. It's from Hobby Lobby. But I just love the colors and the design is really nice too. So I thought this really needs to be turned into something. That has to be shared somewhere. I thought this would be really great as a hand knit sweater in those designs and the colors and stuff like that. Definitely not something I would do. My color work skills aren't all that great, mostly because I don't practice, but this would definitely not be a project I'd want to jump into. I thought this would be fun to turn it into some type of a zipper pouch. There's plenty of fabric to make a couple of them out of it. So thank you so much for sharing your scraps with me. 
So before we get into my plans of what I'm going to be working on next week, I do have one little announcement. I made these needle books a while back. I believe I did a tutorial on my Patreon page for these. So I have all of these extras left over. Because I went a little bit crazy. So for anyone that purchases anything in the shop where I can actually send one of these in with it, I'm going to be including these with all orders until I run out. There isn't any real weight to these at all, so it shouldn't affect anything like that. And anytime I include something in a package, if it puts you over the weight of what you charge for shipping, I always cover that cost because I don't think that's fair for you to cover that. But these, I know I've mailed these out in just a regular envelope with a stamp on it, so these are really good. I believe I made all of these, yes, I made all these one year when I sent them out to my patrons. So I made bunches and bunches of them, sent them all out to my patrons as a reward. And they even go overseas in just one little envelope. So I thought that was really great. But I have all of these extra left over, so I thought I would go ahead and include them with any upcoming orders until I run out. I don't think there's anything in my shop where I wouldn't be able to include these in. The smallest item that I ship would probably be my, my scrappy cards and stuff, so I should still be able to put this into the envelope. Just a little end of the year holiday thank you for everyone that visits my shop and supports me. I really appreciate everyone that stops by. So what am I going to work on next week? Well, I need to finish these up, so I'll start working on these. I have new dishcloths on, so that'll be going on. I'm still knitting Robbie's holiday socks. I have some things set aside for tote bags, but they're not, surprisingly, they're not at the top of my list. I should probably put the binding on this guy because it's just one little quick project, and I can do that entirely by machine. This one wouldn't take too long to go ahead and get it quilted up and turned into something also. These guys, they're just going to be put into a bin where I keep any extra blocks and they're going to get set aside until whatever happens. I do want to make more of the little mini trees. Like these guys, these are made from the charm squares. I have two charm packs here that I think it would be really fun to make a little mini tree a little wall hanging or something. I even picked out some browns for the trunks. So I have the Little Tree by Layla Boutique. So there's some fun colors in here. And I thought the Aurora by Kate Spain has a lot of fun prints in it too. So I thought these would be really nice. I thought I'd start with this one here and maybe decide. I don't want to have... I learned real quick that I don't like... I mean, I like these, and I think this would be great in a big quilt, but I'm not a fan of them in the little ones. I think because of the little tree, if you don't have a dark enough tree in it, you kind of lose it right through there. So I, I don't want to have a bunch of the light colors, but I love the dark with the light inside. So I just want to go through and see if I can match things up in this one because I just think these are really cute. And then I can go ahead and mix and match some of the darker ones here maybe skip things like that and do that also. So that is one of the things that is going to be on my list, but my no brainer sewing is going to be these because I just want to get these moving forward. So if I do a little bit and I touch on everything, then hopefully eventually things will get done. Because if you knit one more row on your sweater or if you sew one more EPP flower, if you stitch together one more quilt block, it's going to move you forward so that you're always gaining momentum and eventually whatever you're working on is going to get finished. So I'll take my facings and I'll keep them set out and I'll get a couple of needles set up with the black thread and ready to go so that even if one day I only stitch across one side, then I only need three of them done. The fourth one can wait for me, even though I will work my way towards having them all done. If I do that, then in 12 days, I'll have them all done. Now, 12 days seems a lot of time to be doing this. So, of course, once you get started, you put on a good movie because all the Hallmark Christmas movies are out now. It doesn't take very long to stitch across this. But at the bare minimum, if I just get one side done, then I know it won't take forever to get them all done. 
So do you have one of those projects that you're working on that just needs that little bit done and you can't really finish it all because you don't feel, you're not driven to do it, but it's been pesting you for a while and it just needs to be done so little by little. This bag was one of those things that hasn't been sitting for very long, but we only did about three quarters of the stitching on one side. So for three nights in a row or two nights in a row, whatever I did, I just made this my priority and I didn't knit on Robbie's socks at all because I knew I had one pair done for him and I still have two months before I have to finish the other pair. So I just worked on it every night while watching movies and TV shows and whatnot, catching up on my weekly shows. And I just worked on that little by little. And look, now it's done. I'm trying to retrain my brain to actually, instead of going, oh, I just don't want to work on it. I'm not going to touch it. To actually go, okay, I've got this. If I just work on it a little bit and I just move forward, because it's something I want finished. If it's something that I absolutely don't want to work on, I just won't work on it. It'll just get set to side. I'll either give it away, donate it, or repurpose it somehow. But if I know I want that finished object, then I have to motivate myself and put in the time. And just to make it interesting, I will draw two names to send the needle book to. Did I say these are needle books? So they're little needle books. So they have a nice little book binding on the side and then a couple pieces of felt to put your needles in. They're just nice to tuck away into a bag. I have them stored like this, but once you have them at home, if you just let them sit like this, maybe put something on top of them, they will hold this shape after a while. It's just that they've been sitting like this for so long. So yeah, these are needle books. I like to put these in with my projects so I can put a couple different needles in there, a couple of pins in case I need to pin something. You can add clips along the outside or even to the inside if you want. Put a couple clips here to hold it closed and then you'll have them when you want them and then they'll also be useful to hold it closed. So I will draw two names from the comments and let's say I will draw them Friday morning when the tutorial comes up. So it gives you a couple days to go ahead and put your comments down below. So your code word for this week will be time. We all need a little extra time. Everything takes time. How are you going to make time to work on what you need to? We're coming up to that busy season and our time is going to be really short and very valuable. So how are you going to make that little extra time? For me, there's only 24 hours in a day. So there's no way to make extra time but I'm going to change my mindset to create little chunks of time for me to do different things. I work at home. I'm home, you know, seven days a week unless I go out and do whatever errands and stuff like that and a little visiting here and there. But since I do so much at home, I need to give myself a little bit of structure and make sure that I make time for each thing, including time for myself. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to leave the code word time down below with a comment and I will pull two names to send out. Let's pick out which two we should send. I think we should send the Paisley guy and since this one has been being held up so many times, we will send the little flower fishies and the little brown Paisley. See you guys next time. Bye.